it's Dylan from Mabfield here, so back with another episode of the Mabcast. Um, no guests this week, we're just going to do some track reviews, get back into what we were doing before, uh, look at some people's tracks, and talk about what we've been up to recently. So I'm actually joined by the co-founder of Mabfield, Jack. Um, Jack and me came up with the idea about a year ago, and only really got around to doing it recently. Um, so yeah, he's moved over and he's going to be continuing with the podcast and helping out so what's the crack how's it feel to be finally starting doing this shit yeah good good morning <laughs> yeah yeah um yeah yeah it feels really good so i only moved over last week been thrown into the mix a little bit we've been to longitude and uh the district magazine launch so yeah just really excited to get going yeah it, it's pretty dope weekend um we had there like so a lot was going on um we'll get into what, what we've been into uh, in a bit but yeah. we'll look at some tracks first we got sent through metric fuck ton of tracks like <laughs> i was kind of surprised by how many we got sent through to be honest um but yeah it's been good uh what, 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 what one's caught your eye uh probably first up we've got maggie Longlegs featuring heavy head athletic spitball uh it's like a sort of old school almost like east coast vibe like mm. really menacing uh like murky beat um, yeah they all play off each other really really well you can tell they're all like kind of experienced like it feels like they're all in the studio when they're recording it because they sort of get into the B and like sort of get into the hangs and mm, the punchlines and stuff like that. Yeah, it all works really well together, I think. Yeah. Yeah, you can tell that they've been around a bit. I mean, um that's comprised of Alfie South and Don Cobbs, um the heavy heads athletic and yeah. yeah, they've got some mad chemistry and yeah, as you said, you can tell they've been around for a bit and that they've worked together quite a bit. It's, yeah, it's refreshing to have a bit of boom bop, a good boom bop every once in a while because I don't know, you get sent a lot of shit, boom bop, and it gets really repetitive and boring, but if you get something that's, like, really playful and fun like this, and, you know, they really go hard, and it's funny, then, you know... Yeah, I mean, we also get sent a lot of trap as well. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, yeah, that's true, that's true. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it, but it's just the most prevalent uh, subgenre of rap at the moment, so you're going to listen to a lot of trap. Yeah, it's always nice to just get uh, a little bit of a change. I think... It's quite, it's quite funny as well. It's, yeah. it's, it's pretty dark, the lyrics and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. with like a bit of a sort of tongue-in-cheek vibe. Um, so it comes off really well, I think. I feel like that collaboration between them two is kind of flown under the radar because I know who both, both of them are. Obviously, I'm aware of them, but I'd never heard of Heavy Head Athletic. And maybe people should be paying a bit more attention to it. I'd love to see some music videos maybe for something like they'd done. Like That would bring a real nice new element to it, I think. Yeah, definitely. I think well, they've, they've only got one other song out right now, mm. PE, which is also another sort of like quite dark, almost like MF Doom style beat, yeah. um, which is also really fun on the, on SoundCloud if you want to check it out. Yeah, and we'll leave links in the description for these. Yeah. yeah, Don Cobbs has got a couple of solo tracks out, which are also like more like really sort of like cutting, insightful lyrics about sort of... What's going on. Yeah, about being poor and, yeah. and like the struggle of like having the paycheck, but also like a bit more self-aware as well than yeah. those kind of tracks usually are. Mm. Yeah, so like overall dope track, really. Not not really a lot of complaints. Just felt like we wanted to talk about it and give it a bit of give it a bit of shine there. Um, the next one that I wanted to talk about came from Gadget in the Cloud. So not a rap track, but pretty experimental shit here. It's it's nice. Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's, it sort of reminds me a bit of like the melodic tendencies of a Jamie XX or a John Hopkins or something, but with a more industrial vibe. Bit heavier. Yeah, yeah. Like you can imagine listening to it in a warehouse sort of just getting lost in the music a bit yeah 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 for sure and like i think like kelly is really coming into her own at the moment like gadget in the cloud like i'd heard some of her earlier stuff and like the the difference is just crazy and she was saying she's supported saint sister down in cork and like she's doing some other other live sets and stuff and she's really coming into her own so this track um it's actually got a remix as well from cabina um it's pretty sick as well but the original track yeah i really i really dig it yeah it's got it's got a nice progression to it um, yeah, it keeps on like layering and layering different uh, different effects and stuff, mm. and then I think it like cuts off at the perfect moment as well. It yeah, it doesn't really overstay its welcome. Yeah, yeah, I think that's like important because there's quite a few tracks that we got sent through that maybe one of the you know criticisms would be quite frequently is that people don't know when to stop, kind of thing. You know, they add that extra verse, they make it a four minute track, and <laughs> let's be honest, like the attention spans of people are getting lower and lower these days. And like, unless you've got some mad structure change, you know, in the song, it's gonna be hard to keep people's attention. So like, sort of two, three minute long is it's what most people are looking for at the moment, I think. Yeah, unless you can do something a bit more musically interesting, I'd say. If it's just yeah. the same beat for yeah. yeah more than three or four minutes, then it does get a bit tiring, I think. Yeah, and I think when we're talking about those boom bap tracks, that's maybe what it is sometimes, that because they do just use like drum loops quite frequently for it, you know, it's the same beat repeated over and over again, and that's maybe why. Like, 
but they with with the previous track with Don Cobbs and stuff, they managed to do something a bit more playful and make it a bit more interesting with that. Yeah, I think uh, Kelly's got a, an album that she's just announced today. Oh, I think. Oh, with really? A, a physical release as well. Yeah. So. Oh, so it's coming out in vinyl. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure. If, I'm not sure if it's vinyl. Oh, or but just like, like tape or CD or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's but, dope. Uh, yeah, check it out. Yeah, definitely. Um, next one comes from Rickshaw, someone that I've. Once I first started getting into following the Irish rap scene, he was one of the first people I was sort of talking about and sharing his music. Um, super talented and in my eyes a bit overlooked frequently. Um, he's come back with a track with Wongy, Feels Like Summer, and it's a bop. Like, it's yeah. it's it's a good track. It's and They're a real good duo together. Like, they, they have some real chemistry and, like, it's super clean. Yeah, it's a pretty, it's a pretty aptly named track, I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, if, if he dropped it in November or December or something, I don't think we'd be as into it. No, but, like, that's, like, a thing that we were talking about, that people still do that. And it's, like, such a simple thing. It's, like, no, like, be patient and take the time to drop your tracks in the right moment. Don't, like, Earl Sweatshirt wasn't dropping his uh, latest... Some, yeah, some rap song. Yeah, or... Uh, you know the one before that i don't like i don't like shit i don't go outside yeah you be dropping them in the winter because they're like depressing monolithic monotone like pieces <laughs> so, in your room <laughs> yeah it doesn't yeah. it doesn't really fit if you were to drop it in the middle of summer and festival season you know what i mean um but it's, yeah. a, it's a really really catchy chorus mm. uh the beat is really well produced it's really smooth i think it sounds it sounds pretty radio ready yeah yeah and that's the thing it's like the production value is crazy crazy good on this the the one thing I was thinking that's that's cool as well is that he it, there's no features enlisted, so I'm assuming it's him rapping on it as well. So he's got those auto tune auto tune crooms going over the top, and then he's chopping it up with some rapping as well, and it adds a real diversity and almost feels like a feature if it if it is a feature if it's not a feature. Sorry. Yeah, I, I, we assume it's not. Yeah, I mean, um, there's no one listed. But yeah, it does it does add a real nice variety to the song. Mm. I think like something that he could definitely expand on in the future. Yeah, and it's something. I mean, we listen to the tr- every track we get sent quite a few times when we're trying to decide what to listen to, and this one definitely grew with every play that we had like yeah i wasn't actually too hot on it on the first listen mm. i think because maybe it's not the most like revolutionary sound yeah, or anything yeah, yeah. but after a few listens yeah i was getting into the groove and stuff. yeah you could definitely add it to your summer playlist like and it would just fit in perfectly alongside some bigger names yeah for sure um next up we've got um smoke by decay yeah so i think out of all the people he's the least prominent artist shall we say i mean how much like the video there's only on youtube this song yeah it's um, like 80 views or something. yeah yeah <laughs> but you know this is this is the beauty of what we're doing like if you send in a track that doesn't have a lot of coverage and you know we get onto it it's like i love finding music like that you know that's like because it does feel kind of cool getting to know about these tracks before anybody else sometimes you know what i mean yeah definitely i think it's a it's a good track it's got like a, a nice sort of lo-fi beat yeah with a, like a cool little whistle motif that runs through the whole thing um I think the only criticism I would have the track is that the beat and like the vocals aren't really mastered that mixed that yeah. well together. Yeah, I feel like it does sound quite muddy and mm. and not all the elements get enough enough space to really thrive. But I think all the elements there are strong. Yeah, it's just not quite come together. Yeah, I mean the potential's there and like the core elements are there. It's just about like refining all that sort of thing, like fine tuning it. But yeah, he it, flows really well over the beat yeah. as well. And he doesn't change his cadence or anything. He's got like that Northern Irish accent going over the top of it and that's sort of what like really drew me to it when I heard it first of all. Um but yeah, like keep sending tracks in and something like this, it's really refreshing to get something like that. Um so in in terms of that the only criticisms we have really is just like tighten up the tighten up the sound essentially because like it was catchy. Yeah. Well obviously He's not super experienced, so yeah, yeah. it's pretty understandable. Yeah. Um, we can probably leave it there for the tracks. That was real good ones that came through. We actually got sent through a lot of others. That a couple I just want to mention just because they were so good and we just didn't have time to throw them in. Um, so Rumours on the Pavement from Class Crack Records. Uh, that's Lacuna and Sheephead on that. So that's the um, collective that Seabackle had started. Um, they're doing bits and they've got a whole project coming out. So I really think people should like keep their eye on that they're Definitely. I think one of the most exciting collectives coming out of Ireland at the moment um Seabackle's sí, got an album coming out pretty soon as yeah well. I think it's like 2nd of August or something so like people need to keep their eyes peeled for that as yeah, well yeah and we have heard it and it, it's pretty fucking good yeah yeah <laughs> it's one of them yeah we'll not say any more about it but it's, it's really fucking good <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah keep your eyes peeled for Seabackle's sí, new album uh, the other one came from Oz Simon called Your Time check it out really nice like melodic singing over like really nice guitar strings the other one was Alone by 7th OB, produced mm-hmm. by LEHK. Again, that duo just kills it every time. Super clean, uh, really catchy track. And if anybody hasn't listened to Taxi Club by them too, check it out. Yeah. Um, yeah. So just some honorable mentions there. Uh, so yeah, moving on. Going to get into what we've been doing recently. Like, you've come over from England, you moved over here. 
Yeah, we I moved over on the Thursday, and yeah. then the day straight after we drove all the way down to Dublin for Longitude Festival. Yeah, press passes straight in, skip the queues. <laughs> it was fucking lit. Like it was good. That was probably the most satisfying part of the weekend. Just yeah, walking, walking yeah. Past everyone in the normal queue. <laughs> yeah, because that that was like a couple of people that we knew were like in the queue and just waiting for ages and ended up missing Pusha T at the very start. Yeah, shout out to Shane from Sold Out. Yeah, yeah, for keeping us like yeah. letting us stay at his gaff. Um. But yeah, it was a sick weekend, and overall, like a lot of Irish pl- acts played at the festival, and um, that we're excited to see. We, we managed to catch nearly all of them. A few clashed, so we didn't catch everyone we wanted to see. But um, yeah, what was your what was your first impressions? I mean, you listened to a lot of these artists' music before, obviously, but first impressions of a few of these acts. What do you think? Yeah, really. I mean, I'd, I'd listened to most of them a, mm. a bit, but not not extensively. Yeah. For quite a few of them. Like I'd listened to Nilo uh, quite a bit, um, but seeing him live really added like a different element mm. um he had like a really good back and forth with the crowd i think like when he played just my luck and the, the crowd was singing the whole chorus yeah, back to yeah, him. yeah 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 like it felt like a bigger a bigger gig than it actually was true true and i think like the fact that it was at like three in the day on a rainy saturday where people were probably a lot of people are still probably hung over on the saturday like in bed like people went out of the way to come and see him you know there was some proper like hardcore fans in the front row like screaming and like losing their mind when he gave them high fives you know what I mean it was, <laughs> yeah. it was cool it was cool uh, it was the same with Y-Axis I think yeah he yeah, was yeah. on the main stage on Sunday, on Sunday yeah. again at like 3 yeah. 3 o'clock or something it's just like you're getting absolutely shafted when you're giving them 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 schedules like yeah but they, they killed it I think yeah like considering the time they were put on I think they both drew like more crowds as they played from people who maybe don't even know them who just heard it passing by that's true um, but I think yeah y- Y-Axis especially had a few sound issues at the beginning of his set um, had to sort of just rely on chanting with the chorus getting a few LAs yeah. going uh, but it came off really professionally. Yeah, like no, I don't think most people actually noticed that it was that there, there was sound issues. I mean, we were kind of like savvy to it just purely because we were like trying to be really on it because we were doing a review of the festival. But like, yeah. I think most people were just like having a good time. Like they were kicking the beach balls around everywhere. Even the security guards were getting in on it, and, like throwing <laughs> yeah. the beach balls everywhere. It seemed like they got a little bit annoyed about it after a while. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? Fuck them. It's a festival. Like so. Um, that was that was good crack and like he's a, he's a real showman I think like he really brought a lot of energy and the inclusion of the Good Buzz Collective on stage as well really helped him fill out the stage and like have that stage presence because it's very easy to drown on that stage you're so far away from the crowd yeah I think having a lot of them on stage helps but they all really use like the space of the stage really well they were like moving around it wasn't overkill to, really yeah going yeah. to the side getting off the stage at the front yeah we had like khaki kids came out <clears throat> jumped in the crowd and started a mosh pit by himself yeah that was <laughs> it that was lit because like that's the kind of thing like it was it was reasonably you know energetic show and then he just took it up the notch didn't he and just yeah. like sprinted into the crowd and everybody just started marching that was sick yeah but that's what you gotta do especially, yeah. when, especially when it's on such a like an early slot like that yeah gotta get, get get like get the energy going and i think like they really all the irish acts really took their moment to shine like they really went for it like there was no holding back and like it didn't seem to phase um, Y-axis that there was some issues at the start. You know, he just kept going. And for sure, there was people that just seemed to, like, their ears perked up when they were walking past the stage and came in and see what, see what was going on. Yeah, well, it's, it's quite, like, funky, sort of, like, easy listening mm. for quite a lot of the gigs. So I think it definitely had that effect, yeah. Yeah, We also yeah. saw uh, Big Pig. Big Pig was sick. Yeah. yeah, she was on the, like, smaller elevation stage, which was a nice little break from the rest of the festival. Yeah, because it was, it was pretty much, like trap bangers most of the time or yeah. like really heavy motion for a lot of different bits like even you know you're going from like slow tie to Vince Staples there's Denzel Curry JPEG Mafia all these people who are pretty relentless when on stage so it was a really nice change of pace to go and see Big Pig yeah she had like a her live band with her as well there was a guy on the on the drum machine mm. there was a guy on bass I think it was and then he got out the sax for a couple of songs yeah which yeah, yeah, yeah impressive yeah and even just like the lighting and stuff I thought of the whole show was like really nice like that sort of like purple hazy smoky element to it that was just yeah 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 she's she's really she sounds exactly the same live as she does on the records yeah um and like quite like a timid stage presence but i think it's, it's quite endearing yeah i was gonna say like it, it came off well it didn't come off as if she was like lost in the performance or anything or feeling like overwhelmed it was just more like she was you know enamored by the fact that people were there to see her yeah exactly um i think 
There was also like massive crowds for Kojak and Kneecap. Yeah, like Kojak coming out to the fucking um, <laughs> the, the Love Island, Island thing. thing. Yeah, <laughs> that was jokes. That was fucking funny. Like, yeah. <laughs> got to do it for the memes. Yeah, but I think they were both. Kojak was on it at like about five or six, I think. Yeah, it was reasonably early. I can't remember the exact. And time. Kneecap were on at four. Yeah, and they both had like really big Kneecap, especially like the yeah. crowd was going absolutely nuts for them. And like for that stage, like the sound was shit. Like. I was really annoyed and disappointed by that because a lot of the acts that we went to see in the Heineken stage, the sound was really shit. So the whole like, Friday, the whole yeah, Friday. Yeah, the whole Friday. Like by Saturday, it was pretty much sorted. You know, it wasn't perfect, but it was a lot better. Yeah, because we, we saw Flatbush Zombies yeah. that you'd seen before, yeah. but I hadn't seen, who like you could like barely understand. Yeah, you couldn't even make out what song it was sometimes. Yeah. And J.I.D. as well, who I was really excited to see, but... I think he was still good, but it definitely was hampered a lot by the sound. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, yeah, it was quite disappointing in that respect. But with, we were saying, like, the Irish artists were quite up against it in terms of, like, their slots for performances. But kneecap, like, it didn't even matter that people could barely hear part of their set. Like, the tent was nearly full, and it was four o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah, it was, pre- it, was pre- it was pretty crazy, to be honest. It was, like, really infectious energy coming from yeah. the crowd. Yeah, and I think even, like, it, it's mad, because I'd seen them in Belfast before, and I was like nothing can top that performance just because it was so outrageous but i think this kind of is at least at the same level just purely because it was at this time in the day the sound was shit you know they're clashing with other people um i think we left someone else to go make sure we seen them someone yeah. else quite big i can't even remember maybe it was trippy red or something like that you know that's someone who they're competing against in terms of trying to draw an audience and yeah. i mean they have an absolute cult following like yeah, it just proved what like a dedicated audience they have. Mm. That like even at a festival setting, you'll just get that sort of crazy like party atmosphere. Yeah, yeah. And there was a couple of acts I didn't get to see, but I was really disappointed that but they just clashed with other people. So J O L well, I didn't get the catch, but he's playing later in Belfast that month, so we'll be we'll be there for sure. Yeah. Um playing in Voodoo. Uh who else? Was it Happy Happy Alone, who I fucking love. Like those lads are killing it, but I haven't got a chance to see them yet, so I'd love to see them. Um but in terms of, like, the festival overall, it's just like, kind of that thing, like, it was good. Like, don't get me wrong, the lineup was good. Bit disappointed by a few of the cancellations, but, like, it, it it's just the give the Irish artists a bit more of a platform, I think. Yeah, I think, yeah, they were just getting almost overshadowed by the stage times they were given, and I don't see why there can't just be an Irish Irish stage at the festival. Yeah, because there's, there's, there's only three real stages, really. Like, they have a smaller one that was curated by Seku that had like short performances by different artists like Marcus Woods, Amma, um, Girl Code were there for a bit. You know, there's there's like a smaller stage, but you could totally have an extra stage at the festival, just Irish artists, like hip hop artists, and it would draw a really solid crowd. Every yeah, act. I think if they just advertised it probably, because even the elevation stage where we saw uh, Big Pig and yeah. JPEG Mafia you was really, find it. really out of the way. Yeah. I think even JPEG would have got a way bigger way crowd, bigger crowd yeah. if he was on the Heineken stage. Yeah, we struggled to find it, honestly. Like, it wasn't well signposted even physically there. Yeah, yeah, especially when you're a bit drunk. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so I think they would, there would definitely be an audience for that. You know, it's like, the most popular genre in the world, the biggest Irish hip-hop festival, there's so many good Irish hip-hop artists, mm. then why can't they just be given a, a proper platform like that? Yeah. But I mean, in terms of like the headliners, like I was kind of disappointed Chance cancelled. And I mean, ASAP Rocky cancelled, obviously, like because he's in jail. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's one of the things where Stormzy was very aware that he was f- like filling a, a void that was left by someone else. You know, he's replacing someone else. And he was sort of talking to the crowd, being like, I know that I'm here to replace such and such. But he was, you know, on a charm offensive. He got his Ireland shirt on. Yeah. He was talking about how much he loved performing in Dublin. And it seemed really genuine. It did, yeah. I think I, I was a bit worried that it was going to come off a bit lacklustre yeah. after, after the Glastonbury set just yeah. the, the week before, which was pretty legendary, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, Iconic shit. Yeah, but he really put the effort into it. There was, like, especially the, the last stretch of four or five songs, it was just all this sort of biggest hits. Like, yeah. Like, Shut Up, Vossy Bop, for, like, a couple of others. Yeah. Like, especially when Vossy Bop went off and there was just, like, 20,000 people just shouting, fuck the government, yeah. fuck Boris. It was great. It was great. Like, it, it felt, like, very timely, didn't it, with all the stuff going on? Um, but, yeah, I was really, really blown away by Stormzy, actually. Like, he had pro- probably has that, like, star caliber about him, you know, that real mega like he could he, he's a main stage artist you know what i mean yeah it feels like he's really taken on that mantle of being sort of the biggest grime, grime artist grime and like hip-hop artist in in the uk yeah for sure for um, sure and not even in like a sort of arrogant way no no because even at glastonbury he was shouting out like 
about a hundred other yeah, 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 yeah. I can't believe he remembered that many. I think he, he's very self-aware of like the platform that he holds and like is very keen to make like proper use of it essentially. Yeah, and I don't think anyone's even like jealous of him. It no. just seems like everyone's just feeling the love. Yeah, yeah, hundred um, percent. In terms of like some other good performances, Cardi B was pretty surprising. Like, uh, not surprising, but uh, like, do you know she she's just such a professional performer. Didn't like break a sweat essentially. Like her breath control is insane with some of the flows she had going on. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think she's got better breath control than like most of the other rappers we saw at the festival. Yeah, it was a really professional performance. I think she had like the whole troupe of backing dancers. Yeah, and I think. Yeah, but there were a few girls in the crowd around us just going absolutely nuts for it. Yeah, I was I was a bit like, ah, I don't know where to look, you know what I mean? I was like, what the fuck? Because it's like, yeah. But anyway, that was it, she was sick. Like, I mean, highlights for you, who, who would you have said? Um, probably Stormzy, yeah. Uh, I think um, Big Pig was really good, yeah. actually. And I think we'd already seen JPEG before, but... Every time we like see him, it's like the crowd is just so nice. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah, everyone's going crazy, but like in a in a, like a really like good way. Because he was like, like crowd surfing, and he went into the crowd and fell down, and everybody just basically created a circle around him to give him space to get back up, and then it was just on again. Yeah, yeah, and in between every song, everyone's just like Peggy, Peggy. <laughs> <laughs> like it's just such a good vibe. Like I feel like every, both times we've seen him, we're just like smiling the whole time. Yeah, because like he's, it's quite aggressive music, but I mean, it feels like a safe environment still. You know what I mean? Yeah, and you can't go wrong with loads of people just shouting fuck morrissey all the time. yeah yeah exactly <laughs> so like um for me i would i would say fairly similar um i really enjoyed uh why axis because honestly someone i haven't listened to a hell of a lot i've been aware and like shane had always told me about his music and i just hadn't really paid enough attention essentially to him so it was like i think you feel more connected to an artist when you see them live and they do really well as well yeah i mean i've been listening to why axis uh, quite a bit after the festival yeah. on like the bus down to dublin Perth, yeah yeah the district magazine so mm-hmm. yeah i was really impressed because uh, like like we're saying about these like full irish lineups that they could potentially do there's enough artists to do it, enough quality artists to do it and like district have already done it with forbidden fruit yeah so they had like the likes of ama luca palm um sour fruit they you know they had like all these artists playing and it was successful. It went well. Like they, they curated the stage and it was good. And I can't see why um, Longitude can't do it either. But definitely. they're definitely one of the entities pushing the culture the most, you know, district. And Eric had said prior to this launch party um, at the Jafaris launch that four years ago, potentially it would have just been district covering a Jafar show. But then there was Mabfield, there was Slight Motif. Sold out. Sold out. You know, all these people covering it. And then he created a panel which i spoke on and it really put into perspective like the growing interest in irish hip-hop that there was a room full of people just listening to us talk shit essentially you know what i mean (laughs) yeah just about like what's going on in the scene how far it's come and like where it can go in the future yeah yeah and overall like the magazine the latest issue like you can have we flick through it there like you had to read through some of the interviews um i'm i mean a on the front uh, Flo Hio is the other cover artist. Yeah, AJ Tracy. Like, these are just names that are dotted throughout as well, a lot of these. Yeah, Clams Casino, Doja Cat. They're all, they're all really good interviews as well. Yeah. The interviews are quite different, actually, I know. Oh, really? Yeah, because they've got, like, it's a different writer for every interview, so sometimes it's just, like, a list of questions with the answers, and then other interviews is more of, sort of, like, a long-form vibe. Yeah, where they just yeah, yeah, more narrative and stuff. Yeah yeah, 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 where they just talk about, like, the environment they were in or the day they spent with the artist, mm. and... Uh, Obviously, like, it's a really, really high-quality magazine. Oh, yeah, <laughs> fucking hell. Like, when you feel it in your hands, like, mm. and, and then, like, the graphic design in it is, is super impressive. Yeah, because I, I, when I was at district offices a while back, like, Eric showed me some of the earlier issues, and, you know, they had, like, Mike Skinner on one of them, and he said that was sort of the turning point for getting bigger artists. And, like, I mean, I mean, he's one of the biggest rappers in the world right now, you know what I mean? And he killed it at Longitude as well. That, yeah. That was, you couldn't even fucking move in that stage. Like, it <laughs> yeah. was crazy. Yeah, he was on the Heineken stage, but I think there's probably as many people there as there were for a lot of, like later acts on the main yeah, stage yeah exactly um but yeah the the night as a whole was it was cool we had nuisance performing as well who were crazy like that just felt like a really authentic really underground event. Yeah, yeah it felt like a more like a like a grassroots yeah definitely kind of everybody just sort of in the room in the workman's club all going ham like yeah. all, all nuisance sort of circled around each other like hyping each other up like getting the crowd going like it was it was sick yeah it felt like just being at a house party yeah, yeah, it did. That was like the kind of vibes. <laughs> yeah, it reminded me a bit of um, like when we saw Finch at the Red Bull Free Gas. Yeah, last year. yeah, yeah. Just a bit more like organic or something like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was a sick performance from them. So big ups, nuisance. Uh, the rest of the night, there was loads of other chats on, and it was just a nice experience because the fact that you can have this many music related chats 
shows the sort of space we're in at the moment. And like you'd sort of been told by other people and you agreed that the vibe you're getting now, it's like a golden age for Irish hip hop. And I, I would be inclined to agree with, with that, to be honest, with what people said. Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> I think it seems like pretty much everyone believes that as well. Yeah. Like the, the sort of impression from the room is that it can only go up from here because there's so much talent and everyone just wants to work together. Yeah. That like DIY ethos that sort of cropped up in the conversation quite a lot is super prevalent at the moment. Um, and especially in the likes of like Limerick where there's like collectives like Prescription that are really working together, you know, bringing, bringing their different talents together and creating some really special music. And you've got Dublin, you know, there's just like crazy amount of artists and Belfast is starting to crop up a wee bit more. I'm excited to see where we'll go because there's a lot of space for development there. But um, yeah, it's, it's cool to get representation from all over the place at these sort of events as well because it wasn't just super Dublin-centric, which I was glad about. Yeah, I think, yeah, some of the other panels were really interesting as well. Like mm-hmm. the one about sustainable fashion. Yeah. How sort of fast fashion and the industry can't really continue as it is. Yeah. And then another one about women in uh, in hip-hop and music. Yeah. Dean Van Goyen and... Um, Mona Lisa from Girl Code. Yeah. That was really interesting as well. Yeah, because it's, it's one of them things that we had kind of been talking about prior to this because we went to Prima, Prima Vera Sound in Spain, and um, they had the first 50-50 lineup. It was like the highest representation of women ever yeah. ever at a festival. And like all of those artists killed it. And it just sort of makes you wonder why that's not a thing already, you know. Especially when <laughs> it seems kind of obvious, but you don't think about that when, yeah. you, when you're at the festival. Yeah, exactly. Because... Obviously, they're just as talented as all the men. <laughs> and it wasn't as if, it wasn't one of them things where it felt forced or it was like some sort of quota they had to fill and they were like scraping for artists. Like the likes of Rico Nasty, like Janelle Monet, um, I don't know, Claro, you know, all these artists are super talented and should be basically like lined up with these other men. At the same yeah, time, and the, right? only, the only way they're going to get as big as some of the men is by, you know, pushing them like that and, yeah. and, and giving them that platform. 100%, 100%. Um, but yeah, like some really interesting conversations throughout that, that whole night and it was just good to have like a bigger entity like district pushing things because honestly it'd be so much easier um to just not do it and be like you know have a monopoly over everything because i think when we lived in manchester the vibe we got from different different outlets and even different collectives and stuff was that it was quite competitive and they didn't want to help each other out you know everybody's out there for themselves yeah i think partly because there is just a lot more of that kind of thing going on in England. There's like more bigger cities that mm. are sort of those cultural hubs. So everyone is competing with each other a bit more. Yeah. Whereas you get the vibe here that, um, you know, even though like the Dublin or people from Belfast or Limerick yeah. or all these other places, they just want to like work together. Yeah, like there's there's space for people to grow. And like that's the one thing I've been thinking about a lot is that although people are competing against each other, it's good for healthy competition to improve the quality of stuff. But there's enough room for everyone at the moment. Like that's the beauty of it right now. We might not have the resources. We talk a lot about how we don't have the financial backing, but if you want to do something, there is space for you to do it and you can exist without getting crowded out essentially. Yeah, I think that was sort of the main point that uh, you guys spoke about on the panel about about the future and how it, how it can grow. It's just that it needs that almost financial backing from mm-hmm. whether it be sponsors or government grants yeah. or something like that. And a, maybe a bit more sort of PR work from the artists yeah. and like publishing their own music a bit more because there's... It's like we talked about the tracks we've been sent this week. They're, they're good enough to be on the radio. They're, like, they're good enough for people to enjoy, but they just need to be put out there. Yeah, because like even the example that I had given was like Slow Ty, for example. He 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 makes amazing music. He's doing some amazing stuff. Um, I'd even spoke about it on Twitter. Like He's obviously doing an incredible job, but he was very much forced on everyone's throats, and he obviously has an amazing PR agency. He was doing that like five-pound tour, the one-pound tour, you know, constantly touring like constantly being in everyone's face you went on spotify when this album dropped on the same day as tyler the creators you were getting a notification about downloading slow ties album like i got a notification about that and i was like what the fuck and you know if you're into hip-hop you couldn't avoid slow tie in the last six months you know what i mean yeah and it's no like that's what you got to do you got to get your music out there and that's how it works but it shows you the difference it makes having a really strong pr marketing team yeah i think (laughs) Even showing that, like, we, he's had that massive push, and he's still fairly underground. Yeah, that's you know true. I mean? Like, he's still supporting Liam Gallagher on that tour coming up. Yeah. And Liam Gallagher's not... Obviously, he's still massive. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. he's not a sort of... Th- that sort of slot is not, like, crime-breaking, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, he's not, like, yeah. a big, like, premier artist anymore. Yeah. I wouldn't say, anyway. No, no. 
Um, yeah, he draws like an older crowd. And stuff yeah, like that. yeah, yeah. So even it's there's always just like more room to grow, and you've always just got to keep putting more effort into getting people to listen to the music. Yeah, because like yeah, there's so many people that I think are so underrated that maybe get underappreciated, and it's not that they're being underappreciated because that would mean that people know about them and forget about you know their music or don't give them enough shine or something. It's that people literally don't know these people exist or their music exists. Yeah, and people like you know Kojak or Jafaris who are probably. I would say the most most prominent, yeah, like professional output they're mm. coming out. Like Kojak and Javaris, both their videos even yeah. are really high quality, really original, and just as good as a lot of stuff that's getting in the charts. Yeah, and it just shows you that you need that extra push. But they're both fairly independent. I mean, Javaris has got the Fusion Lab behind him, um, and Kojak, you know, has a Soft Boy Records label. But they're they're not major labels with huge financial backings, and. I mean, it shows you that you can get to a certain point with the internet, and I think it'll only continue for these guys. Like, over time, they will grow and will get bigger. But for other artists looking to them and thinking, how do I get to their stage? Don't don't just think that that was some spontaneous thing where people just find their music on the internet and just, like, randomly, you know, started blowing up a bit. Like, they have heavily pushed their music in yeah, different they, ways. they've both been grinding for years. Yeah, yeah. I think it goes on behind the scenes. People don't, people sort of assume if you're good enough, the cream rises to the to the top, and and that's just how it happens. But they've both obviously been working super hard for years and years. And yeah, that's why they've got where they are. I mean, Jafaris four years ago went by profound. So the fact that he even had another artist moniker <clears> before <throat> now shows you that like that's how long it takes to get here. Yeah, and I don't think I don't think either of them want fame. Really, no, I think no, no, no. They're both more focused on their music, and I think most I, artists in general. But. You know, I think they, but they would both want to get to a point where they're not just being stuck on like a midday slot at a festival. Like, yeah. they want to have the best opportunity for people to enjoy their music. Yeah, and like even making a full time wage off that, because I, I don't know about them, but for sure there's a lot of artists who are putting out quality stuff and you're still getting a lot of streams and stuff, but still having to work part time. Yeah. It's pretty mad, and the amount of effort you have to put in to keep your music going is insane. Yeah, it, it affects the art for sure. Mm. Like if you if you're coming back from your job and you know you've got to work for a few hours on your album, no no matter how much you enjoy it, it's definitely going to take a toll on you mentally. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's just an exciting time. Like we we've talked about it a lot, but it really does feel as though we're it's start, everything's starting to bubble up, and there will be some sort of watershed moment at some point. I don't think it's coming anytime very soon, but you know. The more artists that are getting to the level of Kujak, Jafaris, et cetera, like, the better. And with this distri- district launch, um, with this magazine, they had all the, the, the big artists, but they had the likes of J, LOL in there. You know, people are actively and purposely trying to uplift these artists we have at home. Yeah, I think, you know, there definitely could be something on the horizon, like a boy in the corner mm. or, like, a Kenichiwa or something yeah. that really just, like, steps up to the next level. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Um and it's just, yeah, it's just about getting that sort of breakout moment, I think. But um, I think we can leave it at there. We talked about a lot of stuff. We're just sort of getting a feel for how the podcast is going to go. We've got a lot of things lined up. Um, yeah. That's why I feel like I've been a lot quieter on social media yesterday, just because I've been trying to organize things in the background. We've got some collaborative projects coming out. Um, yeah. Can't really talk about stuff no, that much. No, no. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll leave it at that. We'll not say any more, but... Yeah, we're excited. We're excited to kick things off with that and to keep things going. Um, I've really enjoyed this with with new guests. Like, don't get me wrong, it's fun having guests, but just getting to actually chat shit about like what's going on and really yeah, get yeah. into it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, thanks for everybody for tuning in. And um, don't forget to subscribe on YouTube. And if you're listening on Spotify, follow us on Spotify. Uh, hit the like button. And yeah, we appreciate everybody tuning in. Um, yeah, catch you later. Peace. Yeah, see you later.